I hear, the, I know you wanted to come see where we're putting in new trees this yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. And so if you look down here, you can see uh, about a 16 acre field, which is mostly winter wheat. But then in the distance, you'll see the white tubes that are used to help um, protect the trees as they're planted. And we're putting in about six acres, six and a half acres there of trees um, in between a tributary of Morgan's Creek and Morgan's Creek itself along the existing forest lands. Uh, all with the support of the USDA and, and the, the uh, state officials as well. So when will we see trees get above the, sh the height of those tubes? Well, the trees right now come from the Maryland State uh, Nursery, um, and you buy them, and they're, oh, a foot and a half, two feet tall, perhaps. Uh -huh. The tubes themselves are four feet, and the, the idea of the tube is not only to protect it from deers and other critters eating them and rubbing them and things like that, but also to force the tree to grow straight up. So um, two or three or four years, you yeah. might see green okay. at the top. Okay. Yeah. Um, they, they really does force the energy. And the, those tubes are designed to be biodegradable, but effectively you come once the tree gets to a certain size, you'll cut the tube off and then you can recycle it or whatever. So why are trees better than this winter wheat for the, for the Chesapeake Bay? Well, the, the big issue is water quality. And so I understand it in that you know, the trees, uh, with no matter how, um, the, whatever can, tilling uh, practice you might have, you're going to generate some soil that could get and other issues of chemicals and things that could get into the bay. The trees, as I understand it, provide a buffer of, of soils and, and protected areas that keep whatever comes off the fields from getting into the tributaries and then on from there. So did you plant, lo see the white that's in the, in the, in right. the, in the did you plant locust too? Is that part of the mix or no, is that? That's, those are actually naturally occurring. Um, this, uh, the, the field, as far as I know, this field has always been planted in one type of crop or another. Um, it's the, uh, because of its closeness to the water, it met all the criteria for the USDA program. And that's why we've, uh, they've selected this particular area as being the best to provide the best uh, benefit for the investment of the trees. So it, we walked down the hill from the house to, um, toward the uh, Morgan's Creek, which is a tributary of the Chester River here in Kent County. And there's actually a, a smaller, smaller trib that's our southern boundary, which is over that direction. Um, so he's in this, this area where the trees are being put in is actually the juncture of a small unnamed tributary and Morgan's Creek, which is a major tributary of all of King County. It's a huge percentage of the yeah. soil is, or yeah. the area is drained by that um, and has water quality issues every time we look at it. Um, we've done what we can. Uh, pretty much every parcel that we can in, on this part in this uh, track we've put that is eligible for conservation reserve programs we've put into those programs. Uh, as a way of, of uh, doing what's right for that. And um, Conservation Reserve is planting trees. Pl it's either planting trees or as behind you there is uh, some of the uh, warm season grasses, I think is right. The, uh, there's a plot of warm season grasses. We also have plots of cool season grasses. And we've basically, uh, we had 200 acres of tillable soil here and we've taken 100 acres out of that and put it in a Conservation Reserve. Uh, there's only one other parcel that's available for that now that's over by Perkins Hill Road. We'll get to that uh, maybe next year. So it's something. Um, and it's something, it's, a, it's kind of a family tradition. The, uh, the Brooks family uh, came here in 1714 or so, and that's my mother's family. Uh, and we, so we've entered our fourth century of farming on this property. Um, and the original land patent is from the 1660s from Lord Baltimore to one of the family members. So it's got a long tradition, a long legacy, and a long, uh, a long heritage, a long, long history of stewardship here too. And you've preserved some of the interior hedgerows. When we drive around the county now, mostly the hedgerows that we see are marking the between two, between property, two, right, two, two right. property owners. But you've got some internal hedgerows, which yeah. is great habitat, good for birds. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. And one of the, it's, it's a, 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 as, as many things are, it's sort of a survival property in that um, it's a lot of work to take a hedgerow out. And I guess the relatives <laughs> never really wanted to do that. But <laughs> when we listed the property as a historic district, the whole farm is listed on the National Register of Historic Places as a district for the house and the associated outbuildings, but also for its tradition of, of, of land use and such. The, one of the features that was mentioned was the, the hedgerows that are here, uh, one leading out to an old uh, a pa north pasture that was for milking uh, for the cows to, to hang out with when we were running a milking farm. But what we found is so many people in this, in this whole landscape love this place and they've learned about their piece of it. And it seems to me that you've got, you know, the benefit of both being able to see it as a, as a, a somewhat of a professional, I should say, but you're also a landowner, a property owner, and so you get to see it from that sort of family side of things. Oh, indeed, and I actually, I, I very much treasure the ability to be able to see it from both sides. And as a landowner, uh, when I, and I look at the federal programs we participated in and seeing the, the different complexities of that. So just to give you a perspective, you saw the where the tree tubes went in uh, down in the lower field. These are some trees we planted around 2005 
been the same process where the tubes have actually come off because the trees have grown up enough to um, be hardy and, and uh, survive any deer uh, <laughs> rubbing and things like that. And this is what one of these forests will look like, that, that forest down in the uh, lower field will look like in about a decade.